Another week marred by Corona Chan and her fury does not seem to go away. Her fury will not let up. So, go Clemson. Clemson was ready to play on Saturday in the game. Florida State got canceled on Saturday. But then again, news came out a little bit later that a Clemson player tested positive for Corona. So, there's that. Um, no Clemson, no Texas A&M, no Miami, no Texas Longhorns. A little bit upset about that because Kansas had, you know, had COVID violations and whatnot. But whatever. Whatever. We still had a great, great week 12. And in a case where three top 25 teams were destined to fall in three top 25 matchups, we got four of those. We got four top 25 teams taking an L. First off, let's start off on Thursday night. Um, Tulsa, Tulane. You know, Tulsa looked very anemic on offense for pretty much the entire game until very late. You know, Tulsa down to their third string, you know, quarterback and whatnot. And somehow they just get the job done. Amazing couple of plays, you know, at the end of the game, at the end of the fourth quarter, and in overtime to beat Tulane. And these guys are still looking in pretty good position right about now. Um, as a result of, you know, as we move on to Saturday's slate, uh, what there was on Saturday, um, for the first time in a long time, there's an SEC game that took place. On ABC, I know, right? First time in a long time that's happened. And Florida, you know, Kyle tracks through three touchdowns and took care of business out there at Bandy. Um, BYU also took care of business against North Alabama. Zach Wilson threw four touchdowns and only played the first half. So who knows? But what we do know is that there is a new scheduling protocol for the Pac-12 could be looking interesting for BYU. Now the Pac-12 is allowing non-conference games, but it's a little bit too late for that Pac-12. It's a little bit too late, but whatever. They're going to try it anyway. So BYU could potentially be looking for an 11th game. Maybe, maybe not. The Pac-12 has strict testing protocols. We'll talk about the Pac-12 in a moment. Um, as far as their games goes. Uh, but the two really big games in the noon window were, first off, let's get this one out of the way first, Appalachian State, Coastal Carolina, Sunbelt East matchup, you know, and Coastal Carolina. They were on the ropes with Appalachian State. They've never won at Appalachian State. And they finally did it. Coastal finally did it. You know, they picked off Zach Thomas three times. And they played great, you know, for, you know, they kept up with Appalachian State. And then they started to play like a top 25 team in the second half. And put, and put the Mountaineers away with an interception that turned to a pick six. Really great stuff there. Really great stuff. And meanwhile, a top 10 matchup that really didn't disappoint for most of the game. There was that section of the game where Ohio State was blowing Indiana out, but whatever. So Michael Penix and company went up to the, went up to the horseshoe. And um, they fought valiantly. I will say that. They fought valiantly. Um, you know, Indiana had negative one rushing yards. And Phoenix had nearly 500 yards passing. Ohio State had 600 yards of offense. 
But in the end, I think it was the pick six that doomed them, uh, that doomed the Hoosiers, and they lost to Ohio State by only seven. It's going to be okay um, for Indiana. They've already done so much more than possible so far this season in this crazy, crazy COVID season. But hey, you know, Ohio State's still in front of the Big Ten East and could potentially lock it up in the next few weeks. So as we move on, you know, to the next slate of games, how about ref ball? You like ref ball? What about bad play? You like bad play? Welcome to Big Ten football. Welcome to Big Ten country, baby. Northwestern beat Wisconsin 17-7. to Thus, we can put any talk of Wisconsin, you know, making the Big Ten championship game and making the college football playoff to rest. We can put, we can put those thoughts away right now. We can put it away completely. Northwestern's defense really did the job. Five turnovers forced. Graham Mertz looked uncomfortable all day long. Three interceptions, just absolutely rough, you know, for him. And, I mean, Northwestern's looking pretty interesting. I mean, they, they, they do need a little bit more offense to beat Ohio State, maybe. But, you know. They did very, very well for what what it was today. Oregon had to survive UCLA, so the Pac-12, you know, Pac-12's best team had to survive another game against a inferior opponent, and there was no DTR, so he he had you know he had to do the contract tracing, tracing thing, so you know. As a result of COVID testing, you know, so no DTR in that game, and Oregon still had the fight, you know, to win the game. Iowa State has a complete control over the first place of the Big 12 now. They easily beat Kansas State. They shut them out, 45 nothing. What about the number one team in the country, Alabama? Come on now, you already know what I'm about to say. They beat the brakes off Kentucky, beat the brakes off of them. 63-3, absolutely disgusting performance. Just nasty, just nasty. I, I don't even want to talk about that. But what I do want to talk about is the number seven team in the country, currently, the Cincinnati Bearcats. They, you know, they did, they did enough. They did enough to beat UCF because UCF has an offense that can score, put up yards at will, so to limit them to only 33 points. And honestly, Cincinnati had the game wrapped up already with like seven minutes left to go, but UCF scored another touchdown late. And the score may not look pretty. You know, Cincinnati only won by three points, but Desmond Ritter threw two touchdowns and ran for two touchdowns. So you can't stop the Ritter train. You can't stop the train, the hype that has been going around Cincinnati right now. And, you know, two games left for the Bearcats. Now, there is a potential because the American started to shift around games along with the ACC. But, you know, the American has shifted around games and who knows, there's been rumors already popping up since Daddy BYU in December. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know if it's a logical choice, but whatever. Whatever. So, you know, we get to JT Daniels and the Georgia Bulldogs of Georgia struggle against Mississippi State. They still won the game by seven, but it's Georgia. And they've been out of the playoff race for several weeks now. So there's really no reason to talk about them. No reason to. Auburn, also another team with no reason to be talking about. Because, I mean, they're out of the, they, they've been out of the playoff race since like week three. And, you know, 
They did it. They did enough against Tennessee. They'll be ranked head against the Iron Bowl, hopefully, if we get that game. But poor, poor Liberty. Poor Liberty. Malik Willis had a terrible game, you know, against NC State. And this game was sloppy. This game was ugly. NC State couldn't really score any points. But they, but they did, you know, beat Liberty. And Liberty is no longer among the ranks of the undefeated. It's pretty unfortunate. First time I get to see Liberty, they end up losing. <laughs> But what about Bedlam? I know, I know. Not, It's not really a rivalry. Let's stop talking about this game like it's a rivalry. It's not. It's like, it's like Texas versus Rice. It's like SMU versus North Texas. Not a rivalry. Not a rivalry at all. Mike Gundy gets spanked by Oklahoma again. 41-13. Oklahoma State, you can completely... Kiss. I, I said the slimmest of chances going into this week. And you can kiss the Big 12's playoff hopes goodbye, despite the fact that Oklahoma is playing very well now. You shouldn't have lost those two games to open up the season. You really shouldn't have. But, yeah, Oklahoma played very well in this game. And there is a hodgepodge of teams with two losses in conference now. Along with Iowa State, of course. Who's at the lead? So, I don't know how this is going to work. You know, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Texas, and Iowa State are really the only teams left that really are worth anything to the Big 12. You know, and there's not going to be a Big 12 playoff team this year. So, <laughs> yeah. And last but not least, even Slowis, Clay Helton, and the USC Trojans travel to Utah. And here's a surprise. What the hell is Cameron Rising? And what the hell is Ryan Bentley doing out in Utah? When did they transfer to Utah? It didn't matter, though, because USC played some damn good defense and forced a lot of turnovers, forced a lot of them, four of them to be exact. And they did just enough to get by. And it, it looks a lot more comfortable than it is 33-17 USC. And they get to go on home to California to stay in California for the rest of the season. So, we know that Corona Chan really messed us up this week. And we know that, you know, we knew that some top 25 teams were going to fall but, you know, and it, it, I mean, it's just going to be, you know, interesting because why? Why is things going to look interesting? I'll tell you why. Tuesday. Tuesday is the next, is the first edition of the CFP rankings. And we don't know who's going to be ranked where. We don't know, you know, which team is going to be, you know, who's going to be five, who's going to be six. There is a hodgepodge of teams that could be ranked 5 and 6. Texas A&M could be one. Florida, Cincinnati, BYU could be one of those teams ranked in the top 5. We already know who numbers 1 through 4 are. We just don't know the order. Although we can assume Alabama will be number 1. I'm thinking Notre Dame will be 2. Clemson will be number 4 right now. And Ohio State will be number three. I know I said that a little bit weirdly, but those are going to be the top four right now. And it looks kind of samey, you know, always the big boys at the top. But a little guy like A&M, you know, or BYU or Cincinnati can break that because of how weird this season has been. And, you know, the Pac-12 has the slimmest chance of getting, you know, a team into the playoff. Because as long as USC and Oregon keep winning, they the Pac-12 has a chance. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that right now. It's very slim. But you know, but you know the committee will take a 7-0 Pac-12 team 
over an undefeated BYU or something like that. You know they'll do that. You know they'll do that. Uh, Big 12 race, honestly, you know, the Big 12 is out of the playoff picture. But the race to a title looking pretty interesting now. And, well, what in the world is the schedule going to look like the next three weeks? Because there are three weeks left until conference championship weekend. And what will BYU do? Who will they schedule? What will Cincinnati do? Who will they schedule? We'll find out very, very soon. But with that being said, everybody... I'll see you in the next video, and it will be after, my preview for week 13 will be after the CFP rankings, so it will be a Wednesday, so I will see you Wednesday, college football fans.